And once we had a situation when um, it was the end of the camp, and I asked them, I said, you know, who would like to join the kingdom? And five of them came to me, and they go, we want to. They were 12, 13, and 14 years old. And um, the director of the camp told me that time, he goes, Natasha, do you understand if you do that? Oh, right, Russians call me Natasha, so it's the same name. They go, okay, Natalia, do you realize that if you do this now, and if they got baptized, we will never, ever be able to do anything in Russia. And that was a very hard conversation I've ever had with my director, but... I truly believe that, well, first, I'm not, a, I'm not afraid of prison. It's just a couple of years, right, miserable conditions, but in comparison with eternity, I think it's nothing. The second thing is, yes, with the actions that could have happened, um, this organization could never do a camp, right, in Russia. And, um, you know, Church of Christ could never enter my country again. But on the other hand, I think the whole purpose of the camp is sharing the good news, you know, and then it's like, you know, teasing. When you tell how good God is, and then if you want to join him, and they say, yeah, and they go, well, you know what, we can't. So this boy, he had been thinking about it for five years. And then last summer, when we had this camp, he came over. The first day, he goes, Natasha, I've been waiting for it for a long time. Please baptize me. And it was cold weather, no matter how, you know, we call it summer, but the weather was cold. But once, we got to go to a river. And um, there was the rule that boys swim with the boys and girls swim with the girls, and then they take turns. And I thought my head will go crazy because... How can I get in the same? How can I get in the in the river, at the same time when the boys go? And then God gave me some um, bright ideas and said, "Well, how about playing volleyball? Teachers play against the boys." Okay, so all of us got in the water and we were playing. And I was um, usually there's like an area, limited area of water that we have for kids to swim because we don't want them to sink or anything. And I was um, swimming to the very um, corner of this um, square. And I didn't tell him anything because I knew it has to be his decision. So he swam right after me. And then it's amazing. The uh, river is blue. The sky is blue. Then the the green um, trees. And then the sun is reflecting on the um, river surface. And then as what? No, no, no. As bright as the sun was, there were his eyes. And he goes, come on, I want to. And so they, uh, the kids didn't realize what was going on because, you know, they were very um, focused on the game. But then the moment when he raised, you know, from the water, he, I could see, he has been changed. And you can see this, you know, when... A person believes in God, and then he acts. And then when he's saved, you can see in his eyes, in his actions, that he is different. And he is, you know, from your family. So he belongs to the family. And that's what I told him. I said, well, welcome. Welcome to heaven. And then um, we got back to the camp, and then he was so just happy to celebrate and to pray. Now we have a rule in Russia for this camp. You're not allowed to pray. You're not allowed to sing. So um, a year ago, we didn't have that rule, so we prayed, and then we sang. So that was his spiritual birthday. When he came back home, it got really tough, because if you do not belong to Orthodox or Catholic organization, a church, okay, or Muslim, you are considered to be a cult. And um, the thing is, his parents did not let him go to the camps anymore. And when he came back, he was very joyful. And he told his parents that, you know what, I want to go back home. I want to go back to America. The reason why it happened again, because the Americans 
the Americans told him about that. And unfortunately, we have very, very few Russians who would, how do you say that, who would, there are not enough Russians to build a church in America, I'm sorry, in Russia. Not enough. So most of the believers, most of the Christians we see are from America. So uh, the family, his family got scared and they go, okay, no, no more camps because your home is here. But the boy, what, the boy, what he was trying to say is that he truly believed that the family, like he spoke about Christians, but you usually don't talk about God with anyone and with, you know, your parents definitely. This is not the topic you want to discuss. Um, so he sort of confused the notions, but we got him. But what happened is we cannot reach him now. I can't. And I guess because just the parents prohibited you know, him to communicate with anyone. So even if you hear the word of God in Russia, even if you accept, it's very hard to survive. I was very happy to meet you and go to this church because I haven't been in the church for four years. This is so, it's such a long time anyway. So you have to like really stand strong when you meet, when you have faith and when you meet God. Um, when you spread the gospel, Okay, especially if you decide to be a missionary or if you spread the gospel in your country. Um, evangelism requires you to leave your comfort zone. And there are some funny stories too. When you do not realize what kind of conditions we have in Russia, and uh, well, first, it's food, it's so different. And you can say that if you don't have a nice meal, you probably won't you know, do that well, whatever you do during the day. Then sleeping conditions and um, those beds. Missionaries usually do not live in expensive five-star hotels. Okay, so when you go somewhere, again, just you have to forget of what you have here and the comfort you have here in your life. And this is a sacrifice and service that you can do for God and for us people. Because again, if Ten, no, no, that was five. If five Americans had not left Atlanta seven years ago, I would have never joined the kingdom. And I cannot thank you enough to first supporting financially, supporting those people to go. And then second, you choose to, again, leave your country for ten days. And those ten days can be like ten years, believe me. If everything that you are surrounded is foreign, and not comfortable. There are like beds, horrible beds in those camps. And uh, we suffer too, but you know, we kind of live in that condition, so it's not a big of a suffering. Anyway, so in comfort zone does not mean only physical, but spiritual too. You are not allowed to do a couple of things in Russia. I guess in America the same. You don't, don't want to talk about politics. And then you have to mind um, the questions and there's the body language, like body language is different. And, um, but I will tell you, people are the same here in America. So if you open to them, they will be open to you. Then in the moment of your greatness, greatest need, God will provide. And this is such a powerful statement. And this is so, so true. I will tell you a story about God's greatest might that I've experienced recently. When I got my first visa, I was asked to do this kind of talks uh, in America in a couple of churches. And um, the